this uh, water harvesting structure as you see uh, in this picture i have mentioned about you know certain very old kind of engineering technology which our people are following it up and there are few which are relatively recent uh, technologies for water harvesting structure now let us uh, shift from water harvesting flood to exactly the opposite aspect of management within a watershed and that is about drought now like uh, flood the drought management also depends quite significantly on the data that actually you have with you so the drought management system it is based on your rainfall data climatic data climate based different drought indices groundwater depth data cropping pattern socio economic data very important household level information soil data land use land classification data satellite based drought indices so these sets of data when you have with you you actually have treasure in your hand now on the basis of these databases or data you start actually delineating of the drought prone area using tools like geographic information system multiple criteria decision analysis framework so this can be carried out independently through gis and mcda but you can also you know bring this two powerful tool together for better uh, you know decision on the basis of your alternatives that are available for drought management now let us see that what different kind of droughts that you can actually expect because on the basis of the type of the drought we need to decide on the management practices now meteorological drought we have hydrological drought agricultural drought socio economic drought now each one of them from the name itself you can very well understand that they have a different manifestation of single phenomenon that is drought so certainly meteorological drought hydrological agriculture socio economic needs different type of management practices now let us see how actually we could actually approach each one of them the meteorological drought means the drought which is largely depending on the meteorological parameters so what are the options or management practices that actually you can try for managing meteorological drought cloud seeding evaporation reduction afforestation easiest but very very efficient hydrological drought in hydrological drought you will see that the previous discussion that we had on watershed management so from there in fact we can also uh, find out the different approaches for addressing hydrological drought so water harvesting already we discussed that how we can do that improvement of ground water recharge also we have discussed in the previous slides we have discussed in quite detail that what are the different kind of water harvesting we could do and also various other approaches for land use management and water management so once you have uh, also this kind of techniques with you you can actually try them for any watershed for hydrological drought management agricultural drought it's bit complicated in comparison to the other two so in case of agricultural drought here you are actually uh, going to you know deal with water importance of water and impact of water scarcity on productivity which is directly connected with the livelihood of the people and also their sustainable well being so here again some of the practices that we tried you know for the other two kind of drought water harvesting is actually a kind of a magic key for uh, most of the problem that you have which are related to water in case of water set micro irrigation in situ soil moisture conservation by mulching that could be leaf litter mulching and also we discussed about you know plastic mulching which uh, i personally do not recommend in every cases but if you have a large kind of you know farm uh, then definitely Uh, plastic munching can be of good use otherwise i think that we should go with uh, our indigenous material uh, 
uh, like uh, leaf litters and etc for in situ soil moisture consuming. Cropping pattern and land use change again I think uh, we have if you recall that we have discussed all those things uh, in, in quite detail about uh, uh, land use for various purposes. Uh, we also discussed about uh, the groundwater recharge and uh, erosion control. So, I think that you know the previous uh, lectures are very important that you refer to when we talk about drought management. So, agriculture drought management also critical for another reason um, that is because you are actually going to you know lose your crops if you are not able to give the water at the right moment all right so protected cultivation is another very uh, new type of cultivation practices which uh, in many places of course in the developed country are being utilized but in india also uh, many places uh, this protected cultivation are being uh, used for you know addressing the agricultural drought so uh, when you say protected cultivation that means is actually to protect your cropping system for any kind of adversity in this particular case it is drought socio economic drought again it's a very important uh, uh, from the perspective of the community and the people because everything that we have been discussing is actually related to ultimately to human so the society is right at the center of our discussion right so socio economic drought actually is important from that point of view any time when drought takes place or flood takes place any natural calamity immediately the first effect is that the livelihood gets somehow disturbed so community based management is uh, one way that we can address uh, socio economic drought participation of government following guidelines policy large scale water development irrigation projects are some of the tools and techniques that can be used for addressing socio-economic drought. So, as you see overall that in case of flood as well as drought management, we need a mix of technology and society. So, the, a perfect combination of technology and society will definitely lead to sustainable management of your watershed and thus also ensure the sustainable well-being of the community. Next, in case of especially the cloud seeding that uh, we uh, just now discussed about meteorological drought because the rest of the things I am sure that most of you are well aware of and many places these are being followed also. I just would like to take the case of cloud seeding because that has become a kind of a very popular way of managing drought mostly in the developed countries but we can also try in India. So why not to see that how these actually work. So in case of cloud uh, seeding basically you know a plane is being used and what you actually carry in that you carry silver iodide or other salt water solution which you basically sprinkle or spray into the environment in which actually form a kind of a cloud basically and then in presence of low temperature and movement of air finally that cloud will you know convert it into rainfall and then you get the water. So, weather motive it is a kind of a weather modification technique and uh, rain clouds like cumulus are largely targeted for that. What aircraft actually or plane does aircraft inject silver iodide or salt water solution or other substance as I said into the atmosphere and these hygroscopic particles which actually being sprayed or uh, sprinkled from the aircraft it attracts water vapor from the ambient environment within the cloud system in larger droplet formation what is actually it does is that it forms larger droplet within this particular you know cloud which has been formed already there. So, thus it encourages the formation of ice particle. So, the large droplet first of all silver iodide this comes into the cloud helps 
with a small water droplet to become you know a bigger droplet. Then under the low temperature and other conducive condition it is become into uh, ice particle. When the particles become uh, very heavy enough you know and cannot float in the atmosphere uh, any further then automatically they fall, they fall, they come down to the earth. Generally rainfall occurs you know 15 to 20 minutes after this kind of cloud seeding, the cloud seeding which is being done by silver iodide or other salt solution. So, this is one you know artificial way of you know forming bigger droplets and forcing a rain at the time of requirement on the ground all right i simplify this case say for example in an area in rajasthan you want to grow a crop and that crop is suppose one of the main livelihood option for that particular community but you are sure that you are not going to get you know rain naturally so hard to do in that case you probably try you know cloud seeding so this basically help to bring the rain at the time when you want. Otherwise, if you leave it this cloud to the nature completely, it might happen that never this small tiny uh, droplet will become of the size which finally can fall down on the earth. It can happen that the strong wind can flow away this cloud from the area where you actually want the rain. So, this is how cloud seeding basically help in case of drought management. So, friends as we discussed in this particular lecture that we discussed about water harvesting various water harvesting structures and also we discussed about that how we can have a kind of win-win solution in certain cases like you know on farm water management or modification of village tank to get plants also in the water field areas and we also talked about uh, different other techniques for water harvesting and then finally we also discussed about that the exactly opposite situation uh, then the flood that is drought how to manage that. So more or less uh, you see that a basic water harvesting approach and management of resources at the watershed level scale is critical for either flood or drought management. Mm -hmm.